You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Hey Star Wars fans and action figure collectors, just want to do a little bit of an overview. I want to dedicate this video to Mr. James L. Jones, who uh, passed away on the day of recording this. Um, 93 years old, he will forever be, um, you know, a core part of the Star Wars family. Um, and very much, you know, a, a voice of a generation, multiple generations. And uh, yeah, will continue to be for, for many, many years to come. Um, so yeah, it's... It's a little bit sad, but um, I thought let's let's celebrate uh, his la life with a uh, with a look at some Darth Vader stuff. And uh, yeah, this is a video I've been putting off for a couple of weeks. So yeah, that sort of just sort of motivated me to um, you know to sit down and talk about Darth Vader and what I've actually done with this action figure set. <laughs> um, now I did talk about this when I bought it uh, a few weeks ago. Um, because yeah, it came with the uh, with the case, the the sort of the plastic top over it. Um, so I thought I'd just explain what I did to sort of complete Vader's meditation chamber. So yeah, this is the I think they call it the five hundredth five hundredth action figure when it came out. I think it was five hundred. If it was five hundred, I can't think of how many we've had now. <laughs> It'd be ridiculous. Which, you know, I think at the time, I don't think it was the true 500th. I don't know, there's some, there's some uh, you know, fine work in the middle. You've got to do some maths to work out exactly what number it is. But, um, yeah, so for the most part, you know, when I got it, it was, you know, a little bit unclean. I, I sort of pulled it apart. There's some screws in the bottom, so you can sort of pull the pull the little bits out and give it, I gave it a good soak and a, a good wash. Um, and then basically... I took the the clear top, which sort of just sort of sat over the top, and it had this shape, which I've got from the top here. Let's see if I can go up a little bit higher. Just sort of point down so you can have a bit more of a look. So yeah, that's the top of the uh, of the plastic, the clear plastic container over the top. So basically, what I did it was actually quite a thick, thick plastic, but just because of the age of it, and uh, you know the previous owner. You know, whether they just not had it on display or they let it get some sunlight affected to it, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't super clear anymore. So what I basically did is I took a Dremel um, and eventually some Stanley knives and stuff like that too to sort of cut it out, cut out that shape. Um, just because I thought it still looked good, it was still worthy of, of use. Um, and yeah, basically just sort of spray painted it black, put it just put a coat of matte black over the top of it. Um, and yeah, for the most part, it matches up with the bases. Obviously that sort of little bit of that sort of plastic sort of sheen to it. Um, you know, there's the part of me that was tempted to just go out and give it a matte clear just so you sort of get that same sort of finish as the top. But yeah, I wasn't too fussy about it. Um, I, I was quite happy with the way it sort of turned out. Um, I didn't get too fussy with like the inner lines there, like I could have, and I still could go over, just go over them with it with a sharpie or a uh, paint marker or something. But yeah, not too fussy. At the end of the day, the centerpiece is in the middle. See so, yeah, the way I was able to cut that out meant I just had this sort of this part on the back, which is pretty much where it sat when it was closed. Obviously, the rest of the plastic sort of wrapped down around it. But, um, yeah, I just sort of glued it onto the back there. Let's see. But, yeah, we still get this sort of moving feature here, which is the uh, helmet coming down. So I thought, initially, I thought I might try and get it to move up and down with the with it. But, no, it's, it, it's fine staying up like that. And then having the mechanism inside, being able to sort of come down over Vader's helmet head there. So yeah, you can sort of just sort of lock it up the top there. You can have him sort of mid-meditation. mid, mid -meditation. 
That's actually not a bad figure. Um, you know, he's got the swivel elbows. The sculpt on the helmet there is actually pretty damn decent. Um, and the fact that his hands are sort of posed like that, so he can just sort of sit with his hands on his knees. Um, he did come with his cape as well, but uh, it did occur to me that when you watch that scene, he's actually he has actually taken his cape off before he goes and sits in the sits in the John <laughs> in Vader's meditation chamber. So um, you can kind of see the scarring on the back of the head there. And if you're so inclined, you know, you can get one of the more modern Vaders, like the Death Star 2 Vader from the Vintage Collection. And, you know, you can take off the full the full helmet and face mask and have him in there doing his doing his thing, his meditation. But yeah, having that sort of feature, being able to come down and drop the helmet on, is pretty cool. It's a sort of, it's a piece from The Empire Strikes Back that, uh, you know, I don't think they've recreated this at all. In any in any way for, for Hasbro anywhere at least three and three quarter figures and uh, yeah this the sort of the next one I'm on the hunt for is the big holographic Palpatine with Vader sort of kneeling kneeling in front so that's sort of my next little step for my for my collection for the Empire Strikes Back but this one looks cool. Very nice, sort of having this moment bit, and uh, you can just sort of have. It was a Piet. I think it was Piet that sort of walked in um, and accidentally saw the back of his head. And you can just sort of have Piet sort of standing by. Yeah, it's a nice sort of companion piece as well from the uh, Revenge of the Sith building, you know, rebuild Vader, or building Vader, not really rebuilding, with the operation table. Sort of another another moment of Vader's, Vader's life, where he's, I don't know, there's a lot going in internally with Darth Vader. Yeah, this this thing is cool. I, I like having this, being able to display this somewhere on my Empire Strikes Back shelf. It's probably the one that's I don't have super great deal of room for, but I'm gonna have to do a bit of reshuffling in order to make some space. <laughs> um, but that's cool. That's cool. It's all part of the fun. All part of the fun, folks. Um, but yeah, again, like I said, just just a nice little nod to. Uh, James L. Jones, you know, 93 years, absolutely incredible career. He will forever be the voice of Darth Vader, Mufasa from The Lion King. And uh, I, I sort of remember first seeing him in, um, first seeing him in The Sandlot Kids, or The Sandlot, um, depending on what country you're from. Some, some countries it's called Sandlot Kids, some it's just The Sandlot. So, um, yeah, he, he played the, uh, the, the blind neighbor so that was pretty cool um i remember hearing his voice and just thinking oh that's as a kid just thinking oh that's that's darth vader you know you'd hear it in his voice but uh yeah i thank you all for for tuning in and checking this out i hope you guys have a fantastic week ahead And uh, yeah, go watch some Star Wars and have fun. Till the next one, may the Force be with you, always. We would be honoured if you would join us.